So welcome to Benny's Designs. This is a live stream with live peoples, all having a natter in chat. Um, I've made some, a few extra colours from my hydras, and I've made some paler colours. So I thought, they've got to dry, so I've got to keep them flat. Uh, but I thought that would be quite good to use them on this practice page. Um, so I've managed to get a little bit of a watercolour effect, but normally when you're working with them from this wet drip stage, it's difficult. It's easier on bigger spaces, um, but you normally just get that really bursting, vibrant colour. Um, like the, the fishes and the birds. Uh, the first that was the first attempt so they're kind of really bright and really kind of in your face and that's a damp brush with the drops of hydrus in liquid form um, and then I did this one the other day and this is from dry so you can get a bit better watercolor effect but it's from dry so I've gone back to wet and then it would be you just get more full-on colour, really. And and this is a little bit damp, so you can just nip the brush one way, twist it, half a turn, and you're just knocking out that extra wet. So we've got the liquid watercolour on the end of the brush, and it's gone back to being a damp brush now. It's not a saturated brush. Sometimes you baby wipe, picks up water every time you do it so you m comes a point where you have to squeeze the water out of the baby wipe so again there's something quite therapeutic about just pushing that color about and it will get paler and paler because the colour was only at the end, so that rigour is just releasing its dampness. Now, it wouldn't work with a watercolour brush, because the watercolour brush, the minute you touch it to paper, whoosh, you get so much colour. Um, and and I, we don't really want that, so I've got to find the brown now. So I put some... Oh dear, I've got far too much now. The yellow ochre one hadn't mixed. I didn't mix it. Isn't that strange? And now I have a beautiful colour, but I've got so much of it. I'm going to have to do the ring, I think. Oh, it's green now. Um, I don't waste colour if I can help it. Um, It's far too much. So the only thing to do is to use a different brush and take the colour from the brush and then it won't be as strong. And that way you're not wasting all that colour that's on the end of your brush. Because I am that tight Yorkshire lass and I apologise for that. So I hadn't mixed the ochre into the brown and it just sat on top. And underneath was all the, the yellow ochre. So I've mixed a couple of... I wanted to mix a, a fawn colour, this colour. So I managed to get that. So I'm quite pleased. And that was two drops of yellow Hansa. And one... One drop of... Um, I think it was the raw sienna I used. Now, eventually... I'll be able to use this brush but it's just got far too much colour on it at the moment and I'm still able to get that that watercolour effect And so I'll just do this one next. So you can get quite a few shades and tones depending on 
how you you use these colors they are so vibrant but yet you can get the softest colors if you really want you don't have to have that vibrancy so you get the best of both worlds you've got some very vibrant colors if you use them neat and if you use them diluted you've got some gorgeous soft pastel colors whereas if you had your pastel colors you'd never be able to get that vibrant color so although they are a little bit expensive to start with you do get your money's worth i think so I just want to you do this one over here And if I was doing this normally, I wouldn't have the brush over because it would splatter. I would normally do it off camera, but to see just how much colour is coming off that brush. And when it starts to kind of scratch a bit, you know you've lost the dampness and you have to re-damp. So this is a Ustream record for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. So thank you for joining me on this mm, sunny, miserable day in the UK. <laughs> right, I'm going to use this on this big one now, see if we've got... No, we've still got tons of colour on here, far too much colour. So if we're very quick, we can manipulate that. Um, I just knocked the brush too much. And so you can see a little bit of colour goes a long way. a very therapeutic way to work so you do get a little bit of variation but you're doing the same thing with the same paintbrush and the same color so you're not constantly mixing different colors and washing your brush out and it going down the drain now let's see if we've got a bit still quite strong that This paintbrush was a little bit too wet, but if we're really quick, we can get that effect. What I could do is to nip that and see if I can just clear that water. but it will probably not be a paler, a paler colour. nearly there now so we can use that paintbrush and it should get paler and paler 
and I've actually covered most of the ear corns up which I would have thrown that colour away so just by being a bit careful I've used just a touch of water I'll manipulate that colour down a bit further and if we're really lucky we might get all of them out of there whoopsie another one of those to do so I need to clean the brush and there was some brown on there so I have I did lose a bit of that brown but I got most of it and yellow ochre for this one again that brush is just a bit damp a bit too wet so we've got that almost full strength yellow ochre and then it's going to go into a really soft pale Oh, thank you, darling. Oh, wow. Oh, look what my husband's just bought for me. He's just stopped, brought me some flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh. Thank you, darling. Could you dump them in water for me, please? Oh, and they're proper flowers. They smell gorgeous as well. Oopsie, sorry. They smell wonderful too. Of course, Alf is having to have a sniff at them. <laughs> oh, bless. Oh, these pr I love flowers that smell like flowers. There's a beautiful rose in the middle. It's a pink rose in the middle. Oh, thank you, darling. Alfie's got his fat nose stuck in them. Do they smell like flowers, Alfie? <laughs> his eyes are on. So Alfie, do not put your nose in my flowers, Alf. Alfie, <laughs> come here. Under there. Thank you. It's so funny. Oh, is it a pork chop? No, it's a flower. <laughs> Silly Alfie. That's put a smile on my face. Right. Might just get another one out. If I like the idea of the ones at the back are pale. So this brush is quite a big brush. So it holds a lot of dampness. I haven't been even back for any water. It holds some nice nice dampness is this number three it, it does some really nice work um, I don't really like that green but I've used it so I've got to kind of go with it but it's not my fave I have to say so we go from here and this is a bit wet this paper as long as you don't 
as long as you don't go over it too much this paper will just about cope with that it's, it's extremely well behaved is this paper So thanks for stopping by guys and thanks for watching on YouTube. If you've got any comments or if you like these, please subscribe and pass a comment. Don't mind oops, constructive criticism. And my thumb is normally always in the way. Oh thank you, darling, thank you. So hubby keeps me supplied with tea and coffee all day. <laughs> and he's a good palate cleaner as well. <laughs> right. So, now for cold coffee. Thank you, darling. Right, so I've got a little bit of a watercolour effect, but because they are so wet, the minute the paintbrush touches the colour, it kind of shoots up the brush, whereas when it's dry, it sits on the end, and so you've got more, you've got less pigment, and you've got a damp brush, so you can, you can control that colour. It's never as strong as quick, if that makes sense. Whereas as soon as you have a wet, it's like anything wet, it's going to mix better if it's wet than if it's dry. Um, so there's two different ways to use these, these paints. You can use them from wet or you can leave them to dry and touch them with a damp brush and pick up the colour. And you'll get a paler colour but you'll get more control over it so you can have a watercolour effect if that makes any sense no I'm not using any water the only water is in the damp brush all I'm doing is dunking in there and then immediately twisting to it now if you can see that's actually quite wet so I'm just twisting so what I need to do with this is to squeeze it out and you can see that water so what I could do is just use that lid so you only need about a tablespoon of water and then the baby wipes gone back to being just a damp baby wipe and you're twisting it and so that is just barely damp that's all you want to do twist it to a point and you want some wetness on there but you don't want it too wet especially with the wet liquid and then if I just get out of the screen if they are liquid they will run like water so all I'm doing is just breaking the surface and you will see that that's got far too much color in it really if you it's very very there's, there's so much color it's soaked up to here on the brush whereas if you touch the color when it's dry you just get a little bit on the end and you've got all this dampness I've got all this paint sucked up to there because it was wet now as it happens that's how I'm working but I don't like it because you get instead of getting an instant watercolor effect you've got to wait quite a while before the color subsides and you're diluting the color this is almost still full strength it's still full strength this is so all this is going to look exactly the same um, it's getting a bit paler now and that rigor is releasing the dampness further up 
and the colour is being used and it's been diluted and that's the water colouring that's what water colouring is it's working with a damp brush and you are watercolouring but you're not doing watercolours watercolours is working on watercolour paper we don't have that luxury we've just got ordinary paper and we cannot use a wet brush because our pages just wouldn't stand it so it's just the tiniest bit and as I say you get a lot more control if you use it from dry but you get more vibrancy and more colour and more saturation if you use it from wet So the rigger is still doing its damp thing but instead it's got a liquid colour on the end and that liquid has sucked up the paintbrush faster and so we've got more colour on our brush than if it was a dry pigment just being touched on the damp of a brush, damp tip of a brush. I hope that makes sense. So now we're getting that watercolour effect, but we've had to go all the way around there. They're, what, they're Hydra's watercolours, and I've mixed some colours. I did a video earlier of mixing just a few different greens with the colours I had, because I only had one green. So I'm using the colours that I already had. So they're hydrous with a damp brush, but they are wet hydrous, they're not dried. And that's why I'm getting more colour. If they were dry, these colours would be pale. So it depends on how you want to work. So because these are a bit paler, I would like these to be a little bit lighter. And you know when to stop because the brush will start to slide and, and go across the page and you won't get smooth coverage. And that's when you know that your brush needs to be re-wet. And again, that's just that little bit wet, but it's not going to matter. And this was a practice page, remember, because I'm out of practice and I couldn't remember how to do it. So now I know I can do it with a damp brush, but I've got to be a bit careful. And it's just barely breaking the surface of the paint. But you can use them very pale or you can use them like this from damp. But when they've dried they will give a lighter colour. But you can just reconstitute them, a damp brush back, you just mix them all back to a, a watercolour, a liquid. Uh, but I tend to like to use them in my colour books. And I think I've got um, I 
and of a yellow. And again, a bit too wet, but it's a small space. The page can probably stand that. And I think that one's just gamboge. And you can do this all day because it doesn't hurt your hands because all the bounce is in the brush. And again, that's why I invented watercolouring for people who couldn't, who wanted to either colour all day or couldn't use a pencil. You just stroke the page and all the bounce and all the stress comes out of the page. Comes out of the brush, sorry. And you can have this effect or you can have a watercolour effect. I just thought I'd get this one a little bit stronger. This is full strength gamboge, I think. So I've got a little bit of watercolour effect. Oh, good morning, Mel. Thank you for stopping by. So I dripped my dunk the water, and it's gone yellow now, because I I had some colour. It was a bit stronger colour there. So I did make some pinks. Um, uh, I did have a a, a a magenta, and again, if you touch it too much that's going to be so so strong so I just keep doing this to really get rid of some but as you can see it's shot up there because it's wet if it was dry it would stay on the end but so I've got four times more color than I normally have so these are going to be and that's a bit wet so what you can do is just nip where the water is and you've taken off And again, this is a bit strong, this. It's it's far too strong for what I wanted. And it won't go, but again, this is a practice. So if you look at the next one, that's paler. And the next one will be paler. Then the, ne then the last. And all that's happening is... The rigors releasing that damp water and it's diluting the brush but it does it a lot slower than it would now I actually don't want to waste any so I'm just going to carry on and oh sorry Sorry about Alfie Pants being a bad puppy. Uh, normally I'm on my own and I can stream peacefully and the dogs just go to sleep. But if anybody's in, uh, 
he likes to be centre of attention and he's a typical King Charles Spaniel. He just wants to be centre of attention, so apologies for the the barks. And there was nobody there, so it's just so this is almost full strength, so you can get some very vibrant colours or very quiet colours. I like the fact I like to work probably better. I like to work them from dried. If if I'm honest, that's my favourite because you get the watercolour effect. When you do this, you don't, or not not as much. You can't go petal light to dark. Not with the strong magentas. They're just too strong. So, um, oh, sorry about the noise. Even when I touch the diluted, it's still, it's still far too strong. It picks up just too much colour, does your damp brush. But when you use it from damp, of course you don't pick up as much. Sorry, from dry. Your damp brush doesn't pick up as much. So you can get a watercolour effect. Uh, but it's, it's almost impossible. So, uh, just move the camera slightly down. So, it's nice for vibrancy. It's nice to be really bright. Um, but, no, I envisage some very pale primroses. And, and, I, like, and I've got some extremely bright ones. So, this doesn't work for me. I don't normally mix colours. I normally just play from the ones that I've got, I've, I've made myself. But I don't take, I don't physically mix them, because mixing colours, you are washing your brush out quite a lot, and that's just washing paint down the sink. So I don't normally do that, um, and that's why I went off the gouache because you've got to wash your brush out every time. And you're just washing paint down the sink, so it puts me off a little bit. Have to say, it puts me off a bit. Because I do like every scrap of colour to go on the page. Now, again, normally I'd do one petal, and then do another petal, and then do another petal. Here, I'm doing a whole flower. So you can see, I'm changing colour, but not, not as much as I'd like. There's no petal variation. And I've got to colour that middle one in. Um, I think I'm going to do it green. And again, there's far too much colour on there. So I'm going to go around and then I'll go back, I think, and do something else. So that's that one. Then we'll do this one. Now, if it had done the bottom first, it would have been lighter. But as you can see, it's just sucked up all that colour. So if you want a lot of kind of vibrant colours on a big space, this is quite a good, you know, use them wet. But if you want a soft watercolour effect, then you need to use them when they've dried.
So we finished that page, um, and I did use the pink and the yellow because I used the gamboge almost neat. So I'll pan out a bit. Um, let me just pan out and see how long I've been. So that's it. It's okay. It's all right. It was very quick. It was fairly quick, um, but there wasn't so much control over the colours. Um, but I quite enjoyed working with my my riggers and my hydras. So thank you for watching.